Last time, we installed some eBay mods on some Game Boys to see how they performed. There were just some small things that bugged me though, like this DC jack. Unless you have a rat's nest of DC plugs in your garage, chances are you'll never use it. What about these AA batteries? Most electronics these days use lithium ion technology. Is our Game Boy so old and decrepit that it has to be stuck in the past? What if we could make the Game Boy's LED indicator tell us that it's charging? Or, for that matter, when the lithium-ion batteries are fully charged and ready to play. With that all said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I had fun butchering this device. To start things off, this DC jack has to go. It offends me worse than a mini USB port. So at first, I was being nice with this outdated component. And then it dawned on me. I will never use or reuse this archaic thing again. So it was removed from the board faster than panties on prom night. Curious if this affected the device in any way. I put everything back together and sure enough, I broke a circuit. Fortunately, that circuit didn't have many places to hide. It was easy enough to take a voltmeter to it and track down where to jump the points. During this time, I was contemplating if a charge management board could even fit in the Game Boy, let alone if I could match it up to the DC jack location. If you ever plan on doing a DC jack delete, you'll need to jump these two points to get the Game Boy running again. While the board I ordered for my final setup was on its way from China, I was dry fitting the single cell system to pass the time. Here I am playing with the charging system to get a feel for its features. I'm also noting the LED charge indicator. Since I had no use for this shell and one of the posts was blocking the USB ports access, I gave it the chop. Up to this point, all the dry fitting was fastened using electrical tape, so now it's time to make some decisions. Being that the DC circuit on the board is so busy, I did the unthinkable. What. The. F using a heat gun? I started to question my life decisions. Now I understand why no one would ever put a USB jack here. But let's press on. Using a soldering iron, I melted a rough opening where the DC jack was so that the USB port could fit. At this point, I'd be happy with just a proof of concept. After wiring the charge management output to the terminals of the Game Boy's main board, we are starting to see it all take shape. Now only if the USB plug can reach the management system while it's housed in its shell. All right, all right. Now we're getting somewhere. We can definitely fit a management system inside the Game Boy and rid ourselves of the DC jack once and for all. Since I was tired of looking at this half-busted LCD screen, let's throw on something a bit more inspiring while this Game Boy takes shape. At this point, I noticed how dumb it was to have the original LED on the front while the charging board's LEDs were on the back. This looks ridiculous. At this point in the project, our 2S charge management board arrived. If you're asking yourself what the 2S means, it stands for how many lithium ion cells are in a series. A typical lithium ion battery is 3.6 to 3.7 volts. If they're in series, they will double the voltage. See, our little Game Boy wants around 6 volts of power. There's a threshold for this, but let's just target 6 volts for our example. A 1S or single cell lithium ion battery only provides 3.6 volts. Our Game Boy needs almost twice that. If we add another cell and connect it in series, we now have 2S or a 7.2 volt battery, over a volt or two more than it needs. And boom, this Game Boy is juiced up harder than a Rambo stunt double. Now, an unmodified Game Boy expects four double A's in series. At 1.5 volts each, they net exactly 6 volts. If we just chucked in lithium ion batteries without doing anything, we would net 14 volts. It's better to connect them in two parallel sets of series. And what better battery to fit the bill than the 14500? To make use of the LED indicator, let's move the 2S to the front board where the old LED is and then run a separate female USB port to the DC jack's opening. Dry fitting the USB-C port to the opening gives us a perfect fit. Not having the USB port physically connected to the 2S system gives us a lot more flexibility. Time to remove this 1S proof of concept and replace it with a proper one. Since the built-in USB port for the 2S system isn't required, let's remove it with a heat gun. 
Time to purge this LED like we did the DC jack. And this 2S board is just barely blocking a screw hole. Let's shave this PCB to allow for clearance. Let's also align the charging LEDs where the old school LED once stood. Most people would use a Dremel for this, but I've yet to find a model that can handle my abuse. This looks like it'll do quite nicely. Let's see how it fits. We don't need to entomb this board like we did the last one because it won't withstand the daily rigors of being plugged and unplugged anymore. And it looks like there's a component that is preventing us from closing up the Game Boy. After removing the alignment bracket from the new LCD, we could see that it's jutting up past the LCD's main opening. It looks like we're gonna have to relocate it. After reattaching the component to the board with some new wire, we could reattach our 2S system back to the front board. Hmm. This looks roomy enough to be the component's new home. Most of the time, I use Capton or electrical tape to secure wires. But since I'll be attaching the component with glue, this'll work. And it looks like everything is fleshed out and fits like a glove. <laughs> now it's time to take a stab at making an OEM looking USB port. This kind of work is for people with fine motor skills. Although I bet anyone viewing this can do a way better job than I. Because this jack is going to get the brunt of the force, time to entomb it and hope it mechanically holds. There's still a problem though. The LCD's mounting bracket is preventing the device from fully closing. Since this shell is uninspiring and 99% of the fitment issues have been solved, it's time to get serious and put it all together. Off camera, I was a lot more careful this go around when shaving the USB opening. There's still a little gap where the old DC jack was, but that's about as good as it's going to get without some epoxy filler. It's time to wire up the two pairs of terminals in parallel and let the top middle terminal bridge them in series. Punching holes in the case below each terminal will give us clearance to add wiring. This top tab is our lithium ion series bridge that won't be cut. All the other tabs will be cut so that we avoid shorting our Game Boy. As you can see, none of the bottom battery terminals are connected in any way. To avoid any accidental contact, something non-conductive like hot glue can be used as a separator. And a little heat will clean up any ugly looking joints. Soldering the last two terminals completes our lithium ion battery pack. After transferring the old USB-C port from the old shell and into the new one, let's do some last minute checks and give it a test. And there you have it. A Game Boy with a lithium ion battery pack, a USB-C port, as well as a fully functional LED indicator light. So, why would you do this conversion? Well, regular AA's net you around 9 hours. Clean Juice's lithium poly mod gives you 14 hours and 45 minutes. This lithium ion conversion nets you over 23 hours of playtime with these Epoch 1000 mAh batteries. And that about does it for this video. I have to say, after playing this device all day and then leaving it on all night was a real eye opener. If you liked this video, or if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. Hello, sexy man. Hello, baby. How is this sexy man doing? Uh, doing sexy things. <laughs> mm, I like sexy things. What you do? <laughs> you do you, sexy man. <laughs>
Thank you, honey. <laughs> Just being a nerd. Doing, so like, doing nerd shit. So if you're a nerd, why am I? Tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>